We must be open to changing direction when things don't go as planned. And I'm sure you'll agree that we have a very, very important task ahead of us, not just as a council, but as a country as a whole. I now invite the Minister for Health, Dr. James Riley, TD, to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Margaret Chan from the WHO and Dr. Douglas Peter as well. I'm truly delighted to be here today. And I believe that this is a watershed moment. We're declaring health promotion to be a cornerstone of our public health policy. Now my views on smoking are well known and we'll continue to address that scourge until we achieve our goal of a tobacco-free Ireland. And what that means, of course, is that by 2025, less than 5% of our people will be smoking. But there are other difficult issues that need to be tackled. Physical inactivity, the rise in chronic diseases, obesity, alcohol and drug misuse, and mental health issues. I am the Minister for Health, and yet I often feel like I'm the Minister for Ill Health, because all we ever talk about is disease and hospitals and lack of drugs and new medications and new treatments. And really, we need to start thinking about keeping people well. All the epidemiologists in this room know that for every euro you spend on prevention, you save between 12 and 20 on treatment. But equally, for me, as a politician, I've made this point here and another fora in this country and abroad. It's much more politically sexy to open a new CT scanner, a new wing of a hospital, than it is to launch a meaningful public health initiative. And I believe today's one is hugely important and will stand the test of time for many years into the future. So if we want to keep people well and get them to focus on keeping themselves well, we need to engage with the whole of society through every available channel to educate and inform our citizens about health and well-being and to influence positive change. We need to encourage everybody both individually and in their professional roles to understand the part they have to play in creating a healthier population. And I see you, the Healthy Ireland Council, leading that engagement and contributing to a better healthier nation. I was in a conversation before I became a politician with a fellow GP who was a politician of another party, Persuasion. And I was outlining to him all these things around prevention and how we could change things. And he said, ah, Jim, there's no point. We'll all die old, cold and incontinent. <laughs> and he's wrong, because not alone can you live longer, but you can live a much better life and a much better quality of life when you keep well. And secondly, you know, the Health Economics Unit of Trinity College would tell us that the last 10 days of life are the most expensive on the state. And if those last 10 days occur in your 30s or 40s or even 50s, it costs three times as much than your 70s, 80s or 90s. So not alone can we all live longer and have a better quality of life, but the taxpayer wins as well. So I just was struck by a number of things, such as our relationship with alcohol. It's an astonishing fact that over 2,000 beds out of our 11,500 beds every single night in this country in our hospitals are occupied by people with an alcohol-related injury or illness. We know we lose 5,200 citizens to death avoidable deaths from tobacco-related illnesses every year in this country, and countless tens of thousands more suffer poor quality of life because of cardiovascular disease, chronic obstructive airways disease, cancers that are painful to treat, and many other things. And then if we look at the issue of obesity and the consequent epidemic of diabetes that comes with it, and all the problems that that leads to and costs, they say 10%, of our health costs are spent on diabetes alone. I think it wouldn't be unreasonable if our relationship with alcohol improved, 
Nobody smoked, and if the body mass index of most people was less than 25, I don't think it's unreasonable to believe that half of our hospital beds would be unused. So that's really something that strikes a chord with our politicians who struggle with the financial constraints that the country faces and is likely to face serious financial challenges long time into the future with our health service, no matter how good our economy is, if we continue along the road that we're going at the moment. So we need to change from a hospital-centred approach to a primary care-centred approach, a community approach, and one that empowers patients and individuals to look after their own health and be in control of their own health. And to realise that they have a health issue when they have one. I used to run, and I see Donald O'Shea here who runs the obesity clinic, but I used to run when in my own surgery just and check people's BMIs, and half the people who were actually obese didn't even realise they had a problem. So, I mean, the first step to tackling a problem is to identify and realise you have that problem. But we can't do this on our own. There's no question about that. Health cannot do this on its own. We need government support, and we have it. And that picture that was up there a moment ago of the entire cabinet accepting, holding, and promoting Healthy Ireland is proof positive of that. And we have a very committed Taoiseach to this as well. So we need justice, we, you know, we have to have their input, we need safe streets, we need laws that protect us, we need a, a safe environment to exercise in, not always a gym, but it can be better lit roads, and I always refer to my own village of Lusk, where as part of the redevelopment they built a new ring road which has a cycle path and a walking path and it's well lit. In fact the locals refer to it as fat ass alley, that many people use it for exercise. <coughs> I prefer to refer to it as Wobbler's Way. But anyway, um, but, I mean, these are things that can make a huge difference to people, make it safe for people to take exercise at a time that's convenient to them in a way that they enjoy. And obviously we need the support of education around educating our children into healthy lifestyles and healthy habits. And ongoing education, the Department of Sport, Tourism, no matter what department you look at, finance and the way that we tax our goods. I mean, vending machines that sell sugar-sweetened drinks as opposed to, you know, ones that would sell fresh produce and putting some tax incentives that way. And of course, you know, I'd love to see every cigarette costing one euro each so that people would think long and hard before they drag long and hard. So I'd just like to again thank Dr. Margaret Chan, the Director General of the World Health Organization, for being here. It's fantastic to have her support and her input. She is, as Keith has said, a world leading figure in relation to prevention and good health for all nations. And the great thing that we have discovered from talking to each other, which, you know, is, is the amount of information that's available out there to us to support each other. I want to also thank Keith Wood for taking on this challenge and becoming chair of the council. I think your track record in sport and representing your country and inspiring your team. I was thinking, you know, <coughs> this out bit of a fan of rugby obviously, uh, that it's very easy for the people who play in the backs. It's not very easy, but I mean they're the stars, they're like the forwards, they score the goals, score the tries. It's unusual to get somebody who could be so inspirational who's in the front row. And that is a, a truly remarkable tribute to your leadership skills and your ability to inspire. So I think you're going to find in this group of individuals whom I want to thank very much for taking up this challenge people who are already inspired, but that you can inspire to even greater achievement into the future. Can I just say that I'm going to finish shortly, but I do want to say something to you as a group. I did say at the outset, I believe this is a watershed moment, and it is. You're going to be the pioneers. You're going to be challenged to think innovatively, and never be afraid to try new ways of getting the message across, of changing things. And you know, if you look up the definition of a pioneer, it's to develop or be the first to use or apply a new method, area of knowledge or activity. And that's precisely what you'll be challenged to do. But I believe, into the future, that promoting, by promoting healthy lifestyles, you have the potential to be more effective than any drug or any operation ever undertaken. So 
I believe you as a small group of people would be in a position to save more lives, add many more years to people's lives and make those extra years quality years. And I believe that would be something to be really, really proud of, something to be able to look back on in years to come and say, yeah, that was real good. I was part of that. So having said that, and wanting to wish you every success and knowing that you will have success and my support and that of the government into the future, I'd now like to invite Dr. Margaret Chan to say a few words. Thank you.